Well, first of all, thank you guys for joining us. I'm blessed by the presence of both of you, Lil Wayne and OBJ, so thank you for joining me at the table. I appreciate it. You know, here's the thing. As I was texting both of you recently, I thought about how you guys are both Louisiana natives, both iconic representatives of the 504 area code. Pointed at him already, right? So, Little Wayne, when I say OBJ, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? The catch. The catch. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then after that, it's just how hard he goes. And a lot of things people don't know about him, just a more of a city connection that people don't know about him when I see him one on one, I, I talk to him and then to see what he go out there and do. Yeah, it's amazing. Okay, all right, OBJ, so when I say Lil Wayne, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Home, you know, mm -hmm. it's like where we grew up. Uh, I used to play at Harrell, you know, Harrell Park. So it, it just is, it's a connection that we have, like you said. We grew up on, everybody grew up on Wayne. All right, so matter of fact, you got a tattoo of Lil Wayne on your right thigh, right beside Bob Marley, Evander Holyfield, Mike Tyson. Can you explain just how that came about? Um, legendary, mm -hmm. a legend yeah, that's a forever, crazy list, right? you know? Yeah. This is the leg of legends. These are people who, um, you know, set the tone for us and did things um, iconic, and he's obviously iconic, so we own him. Appreciate it. <laughs> And for you, obviously, you got a lot of tattoos on yourself right now. Can you tell me currently what's the one that means the most to you on your body? The C on my forehead is from my mother, Sita. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's going to always mean the most, no matter what I get. It's going to always mean the most. It's my mom. Yeah. yeah. It's just like I always felt like, you know, we all from we all get a cross right there. Mm -hmm. I have one there, too. But I was like, you know, let's get that C yeah. right there so they can Let always me see. know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Like, you know, you get that right there. Just let them know. Stamp that. I'm Cetus. Yeah. Yeah. So for somebody who doesn't have a tattoo, I want you to explain. I have none right now. So I want you all to explain to me, why is ink so personal to the both of you? OBJ first. Um, It's a form of expression. Mm -hmm. You know, you can express yourself through it. Um, not to say you need something to remember things by, but it's a way of remembering things. Um, and, and, you know, I got a lot of them too, but... I don't have any that aren't meaningful. So all of them that you put on your body, it means something to you. And that's, that's really what it boils down to. So do you have a recommendation for what should be my first tattoo? And watch yourself now. <laughs> what should I get? I'm asking you. Denzel. Denzel Washington. <laughs> I'm not going to ask where. Do you got a recommendation for me? I don't even know. You don't know? Just don't get nothing stupid. Don't, don't get nothing stupid? Yeah. Let's actually pivot to this. Since you have Lil Wayne beside you, obviously one of the greatest rappers of all time. Thank you. Obviously, here's an opportunity for you to maybe get in the cypher, do a little freestyle, maybe put a little oh, lyric down. Yeah, I'm just do saying, that, you know, that. is there anything that you want to do with him right there? Nah, don't do that, man. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> do that. We yeah. might have something dropping soon, though, you know. Who, the two of you? Uh, yeah. Did you talk about it? Yeah, just now. Just now? First of all, every time he walk up to me, whenever I see him, um, He's probably, he, he, instead of saying hello, he usually spits a few bars or whatever. <laughs> really? No. Or whatever is come to him. Probably. Yeah. Okay. Well, you did post on Instagram a picture of you throwing a ball, and then you had, uh, like, a little lyric of Lil Wayne's. Yes, QB Weezy, young Tom Brady, open your mouth, and then Tom Brady finished it with catch a bomb. So I want to ask you, how much street cred does Tom Brady really have in your mind? And then we'll ask you that in a second. It's probably due to you, um, but he, he doing it right now. He got it. Yeah, I mean, you said street cred. What street cred is is when you go on anywhere in, on any street and mm -hmm. you and you throw the name out there and ask them, do they know the person and what does the person do? Mm -hmm. You ask them go on any street, ask them, do you know Tom Brady? Yeah, what does he do? You know, he got a lot of street cred, That's and I don't right. know if it's due to me. I think it's what he did on the field, truthfully. So what aspect of OBJ do you admire the most when it comes to him as a football player? Earlier, you said the catch comes to your mind, but when you think about him playing on the field, what most about his game would you say that you admire? Personality. Mm -hmm. Personality. These are people who wear helmets, mm -hmm. and they have a, that you partially can see who they are. If you can even see their eyes, they may have a shield on or something. Mm -hmm. So it's hard for your personality to come out through a number. You know, and it stands out as soon as it, as soon as they, as soon as they, as soon as he line up, and Lord knows if the ball goes to him, and you already know what happens when it does, and just personality, period. Even when he's blocking, you already know it can get a little too hectic. <laughs> per, that's personality coming out, and that's um, that's not standing behind the line. That's being who you are, mm -hmm. and that's not being that number. That's being who you are. 
and, and speaking the name on the back of the jersey there and that's who he, that's what I see when I see him Absolutely. And speaking of personality, how do you think the roots of where you come from, you, Baton Rouge, you, New Orleans, Holly Grove area, how is that reflected in your personality and ultimately the legacies both of you want to have in the culture? You first. Me, um, Holly Grove, the area, and just period, New Orleans period, has it um, plain and simple. We come from a lot, you know, a lot being a lot of good, a lot of bad, mm -hmm. a lot of triumph, a lot of tragedy put it all together and, you know, you make something beautiful of it. Um, something, uh, you give us a canvas and you throw a bunch of paint on it and you turn away from it and you look back and it's awesome. So how do you think where you come from, OBJ, is reflected in how you are, how you carry yourself, how you go about things? I think, piggyback off what he said, it's just the nature of it down there. It's just the way that we was raised, it's the way that we think, it's a mentality. And it's just something that's carried throughout all Louisiana. And um, it's definitely reflective in the way that I play. You know, when I got to LSU and I was with a bunch of them people and a bunch of, you know, Jarvis and all them, it's like we, we had a savage mentality. And I remember me, I was always kind of like a nice guy. Like I, always, I was always good. I was always better than people, but I didn't want to embarrass them in a way. Like I would not play nice, but a little bit of like play nice until mm -hmm. they started trying to big boy and, and dog me. Oh, and gotta go you. That's when it turned and it took that dog out of me. And, um, for a while, I felt like I was all bite and no control. Like, I didn't really know how to control it, but I knew how to bite. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just, like I said, it's just how the mentality is done. Well, here's the interesting thing I was thinking about. Both of you are in the midst of highly anticipated returns within the same month. You, OBJ, to the football field after spending a year out, breaking your ankle, um, going through that adversity, trade rumors and then rebounding to a $95 million max deal. You, yeah, okay. You to the uh, music charts, dropping your the Carter Five album this past Friday, which you first announced in 2012 after a protracted legal battle, right, with cash money. So I wanna turn to you and say, when you think about fear, when you think about doubt, trauma, all of those things that can turn around and serve as motivation, do me a favor right now, Close your eyes. I'm serious, close your eyes. And I want you to think back to what you think was your darkest hour, okay, this past year, that you think threatened your love of the game and you know who you are and what you wanna be when you were going through all of that this past year. Um. I can think of two moments. Um, one when I was in the hospital bed, and um, you know I was being either not taken care of or very well taken care of. But they had me in there on um, pretty much everything, um, just anything to make you feel better. The pain, and I just remember going through things with my body that I couldn't, I couldn't imagine it happening to me. I was in there jerking. I was my body was moving like movements I never had. Um, and then I got past that part, and there was a part where I was just starting to run again a little bit. Um, but the movement of your ankle, everything, it was not the same. And there was that little moment of doubt of like, I don't think I'll ever be the same person again. I don't think that I could do this anymore. Um, and what really motivated me during that time was like, what message would I be sending to the only people that I care about, which is the kids who are our future, if I were to not work my ass off to be able to get back on the field to show them that, you know, to never quit. Even, you know, you go down, who, how could I motivate somebody or tell somebody to keep chasing their goals if I stopped after, you know, something like that happened to me? And that was really the the motivation. But I, I remember I was out of Exos training and I was running and um, it just started to all hit me. Like, I don't think I'll ever be the same. And um, it wasn't a good feeling. Um, doubt came in more and more and I just had to keep fighting and I uh, made it through. Mm -hmm. And when you think about how long you battled just to even get the Cardify released, um, especially with the long battle you had with Burman and just getting to the point where you had the lawsuit settled, I want you to close your eyes and I want you to think thoughtfully and honestly about what you feel like was your darkest moment that you thought threatened the possible you know, release date of this album where you thought it might not ever happen? Um, 
I'd have to say that time would be just a a simple day or night, a conversation with my mother on the phone. You know, it, nothing brings reality to you like a conversation with your mother because you are no longer what you are to the world. You are no longer what you are to your friends. You're no longer what you are to yourself. You are who you are and what you are to your mother when your mother is speaking to you and you are her son. And just a simple question from her, simple question is something like, do you still want to do it? And do you still think it's worth it? And when you hear a woman like your mother tell you something like, baby, you have accomplished everything. You have surpassed everybody's, not only hers, not only yourself, not only the world. You've surpassed all of their dream. You've done whatever you need to do. You don't have to do this no more. And when she say something like, yeah, you've been missing from whatever they think you've been missing from, but your children think you put out an album every day. That's the way you treat them. That's the way their world is. And that's when they hit you and you have to ask yourself, do I, do I still need to do it? Do I even care if the album's coming out? Do I need another album? Does the game need me? Does music need me? And then, you know, you do a song and you hear it and you're like, hell oh, yeah, need me. <laughs> they need to hear this. <laughs> then you gotta get it out. Get then it the out. people need to hear it. So bringing it back to that though, when you're speaking about any pain that you're internalizing or that you're going through, how much of that is connected to just the male figures in your life when you think about your father, when you think about the man who you called your real father, Reginald McDonald, who passed, and obviously, you know, Birdman, who you've gone through a, a long, you know, uh, relationship with. Um, how do you feel like all of those different relationships interplay to that pain and perhaps what you were just talking about, your darkest hour, and whether that, you know, whatever come through in terms of pushing to this creative process and getting that album done? I start with friends first, male friends, homies. Um, what, the way they help is just straight motivation, like they should be, support. And just always, you know, letting me know, bro, we'll tell you if, it, if you don't need to be doing this, we'll tell you if it sucks, we're gonna tell you. You know, like, we, and they also know that I don't know what's going on. I don't listen to nothing else but myself mm. because I work every day, so I gotta correct what I just did that night before. Mm -hmm. So it's not that I don't like to hear nothing, so whatever, but mm -hmm. they know that, as in my friends. So with that said, they always tell me, boy, you need to be heard. From what we hearing, you need to be heard. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So with that said, then I move on to um, Stunt the Birdman. Uh, it's just straight confusion mm -hmm. when it comes to that. It was confusion. Um, you know, some things I get, some things I thought I get, I got, some things I thought I understood, whatever. It's just confusion. I'm a humble person. When I see you, if I'm happy at that time, if everything is okay with me, if I'm satisfied, no problems then, man. Shake hands, it's all good. Mm -hmm. As far as Reginald Rabbit, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you know what that feeling is. At those times, it's like, where are you, man? I need, to, I need somebody to talk to to be able to say, uh, if I've been through things like this, mm -hmm. this is how I handle them, mm -hmm. and this is how I think you should handle it. Or you know what, I just put it out on the table for you and then you pick the way you want to handle it or you go and get in the fridge and pick something better. Mm -hmm. I didn't have that person, so mm -hmm. I just had to stand in that kitchen and figure it out. Mm -hmm. I hear that and I appreciate that. And speaking of fathers, you know, I know how much your mom means to you, Heather, and how much she's been a part of your career, see her at camps, you're on the sidelines, see you at the ESPYs with her. But, uh, one person I'm particularly curious about is your dad, mm -hmm. Odell Beckham Sr. And I want you to talk to me about how you feel like that relationship has impacted your personal fire. Um, I think one thing I can say about my pops is um, he kind of, he's part of the reason, obviously, why I'm here where I'm at today. Um, and I also was able to learn from some of the things he wasn't able to do and he was going to make sure that I, I was going to be able to do it. Obviously, that's always a goal as a father is to, is to make your son or your daughter, whoever it is, a better person than what you are. Um, and I think he tried and did his very best to, to do that and set me up for that. Um, one, incident, one incident I could really remember, uh, we was, it was a turkey bowl that was on my head in Atlanta, and it was a freezing cold game in like November, December. He drove up in his little 350Z, no AC in the car, no windows down. He had the leather jacket on, the, gla the gloves, everything. Drove like eight hours to get to that game, made it to the game. And I remember just 
seeing him just, you know, I hadn't, I hadn't talked to him in a, in a little minute, um, and just seeing him on the gate, like, at the game, just randomly popped up. Um, and that moment stuck with me forever because it's like he loves me, like, mm -hmm. in a way that can't be explained. And he wants to see me succeed, and he wants to be there and be able to see and do all those things. So um, I love my pops to death. We're closer now than ever. Um, I'm thankful for the, the good times, the bad times we had, everything to be able to be where we're at now, and we can really enjoy these moments. I think that real people and both of your fans can learn from you know, your real moment, right? Both of your personal triumphs and also your tragedies. You're a Christian. I, I really do want to know how religion plays into your creative process and how also religion, you know, convicts any personal regret that you might have. Um, for me, it's just, um, it's a natural thing. Uh, you know, when I'm behind the mic, or when I mean behind the mic, I mean in the booth. Uh, in the booth, um, in the booth is alone, alone in the booth, just me and the mic and my thoughts. Uh, plays a huge part there because there's lines I won't cross. And simple and plain, there's lines I won't cross. Um, it doesn't have to be a, um, an obvious line, as in speaking about women or nothing like that. It's other lines I won't cross because of my spiritual, I mean, my, my spiritual background or whatever, and what I believe in and my beliefs. And uh, other than that, as as far as regrets. Um, uh, that isn't that won't ever be any regrets because I know no one's perfect and I know that you're accepted to not be perfect and you're you know and you you'll be forgiven if you repent mm -hmm. and I believe in that and I definitely try to repent for everything I've done. Now here is interesting. I was uh, listening to your closing song on the car to five, right? Let it all work out, and that's when you started to talk about. Uh, the attempt on your life, right? And recently you let people know that that wasn't an accident. Yeah. And uh, I'm gonna read to you part of your lyrics in part. It says, I found my mama's pistol where she always hide it. I cry, put it to my head and thought about it. Nobody was home to stop me. So I called my auntie, fast forward. I shot it and woke up with blood around me. God came to my side and we talked about it. He sold me another life. And he made, and a, profit. He made a profit. Yes, he did. Okay. So I want to know what was your thought process for sharing such a taboo topic? And was it recently influenced by the passing of Kate Spade and Anthony Bourdain in terms of your decision to do that? Um, I can't say that it was because that song has actually been recorded for probably over four years. Mm, okay. Verse, everything has been recorded for so many, and I felt that way when I thought that the album was coming out. I was ready to come out with it then, mm -hmm. so, um, you know, whatever happens, the, the reason the album didn't come out, and then time is time, and things happen, and it comes out, and so, like I said, unfortunately, it wasn't about that, mm -hmm. but you know, of course, that's the same type of situation. But um, what the thought process during doing that verse is, uh, and what made me do it was just ready to get it off my chest. And if I'm gonna get it off my chest in any kind of way, the best way I'm gonna do it is make it rhyme. So speaking of spirituality, right? You and I had a lot of conversations over this off season about things that you were going through, uh, feeling like you were ready to kind of turn down the volume on your life and recenter that culminated into a trip uh, to Jerusalem uh, where you went to the Jordan River, baptized. Excuse me, I don't mean to stop for you. Oh, you went to Jerusalem? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he did, he did that. So I want you to, you know, just kind of take me back to that moment exactly when you went under and what change did you feel? Uh, I think kind of going off what you said about how you believe in repenting and forgiveness and, um, and just regrets in general and regrets one thing about me is I don't I say I don't regret anything because at one point in time it was exactly what I wanted mm -hmm. so I, I could never regret something in that moment that's what I wanted to do um, with it with myself there was things that I've done in my life or 
incidences or, or decisions that I made that I, that I didn't like and things that happened to me. Not to say I regretted them, but I could never forgive myself, even though I know that I'm forgiven, always. If you ask for it, you're forgiven, you know. Uh, but I just couldn't forgive myself. So I wanted to take a trip to Jerusalem. I wanted to do something to where I could really feel it, to where I could be to as close to possible as, as where I feel like I belong. So um, I went there. Um, and you know the, the baptism thing was cool, but after that, I stayed. I, I myself, you know, went under the water, and I just, I, I said some things to myself that just, it's like I got to release something. You know, nobody can hear. Or, you know, only God and I know. Um, and that's really where I felt forgiveness in my heart, and uh, came back, and I felt like a much better person from it. So when you said there's some decisions that you were trying to like reconcile with? Is there anything that you can share? Just in general, life, you know, little little things, um, relationships, people, people, everybody around you just doing things. Um, some things that I, I didn't like, not to say, you know, right now, but just some things, decisions that I didn't like that I made or, or things that I allowed to happen to me. Um, I just felt it was a way of being able to take control of your life again. So speaking of problems. Uh, let's transition to the Giants right now. Okay. So <laughs> why are you scratching your head already? Because of the intro. Because of the intro? <laughs> okay. Well, we have to keep it real. Uh, team has a lot of potential. Okay. All right. Right. But they are one in three. The good news is you have 31 receptions for 331 receiving yards. The zero touchdown that doesn't go with your name on the back of your jersey. Okay one target in the red zone. And as an offense, you guys just have three uh, passes of 20 plus yards or more. So I want you to tell me, <laughs> mm -hmm. I want you to tell me what you think is the biggest heart of the issue. Um. <laughs> you you uh. leaning in there, Lowen? <laughs> you ready to hear this? Me too. It's just, it's a different place, you know, the the energy, it isn't like where I say we come from. It isn't that, that savage mentality of like, um, and, and it's the NFL, it's partly the NFL, you know, it's different than college. When we left practice in college, we, we going to eat uh, university seafood, we going to Cane's, we going to get some food, we going to chill in the room, like we chill together. And, you know, when everybody leaves, they got a family, they got wife, they got kids to go home to. Um, and necessarily, I don't have that. So I try and build that relationship with my teammates because I want to know who, who am I going to war with every day. You know, who, who when it, when the heat when the heat's on, who is this person outside of just being in work and saying what's up? Um, so a lot of it has to do with the energy that we have uh, that we don't bring every single day. Um, and you know me, I'm a passionate, energetic person. I always have to have that. If I don't, it's going to be a problem for me. Um, and, and just. Playing with some heart, like we, we just need to play with some heart. We're only one and three. You know, we last year, I mean, the year we went 11 and five, we were two and three. We ended up being two and three after five games. So you never know when you can go on a run, um, but it's just a matter of when we're going to go on a run. What, what, how come we can't throw the ball for more than 20 yards? How come we don't attempt or try to throw the ball for more than 20 yards? Um, those are questions that, that we have to figure out. But. For now, I would say it's, it's our heart, it's our energy, it's, it's what we bring when we line up before the game. All of that, it counts. Do you think, he just signed a five-year extension, okay? It's a long time. Mm -hmm. you, personally, do you, how do you feel about that duration? Do you think that that's too long when you're talking about athletes and signing shorter contracts and trying to maximize another big bite at the free agent market to get more money? You know about contracts and things like that. Or, exactly. or do you do it the Carmelo way, not the LBJ way, you know, the LeBron way, and, you know, you go with the longer, you know, duration? Um, for me, my answer is simple. Mm -hmm. I have no answer for that. Those are grown men. Those those decisions they make are for the future and for their lives and their mm -hmm. families. So I have no answer, okay. on, no opinions on what they should be doing. Or okay, well, be he's doing. right there, so let's ask him mm -hmm. how you feel about signing that five-year extension now. That's the worst part about it is that everything. It's like, oh, well, at least you got paid. Like, that to me is not why I came here. Like, yeah, obviously you want to get paid for your talents and what you've done, but if you have a window this big to maximize your full potential and something's holding you back from doing it, 
that's more frustrating to me than anything else. I just want to be able to be the very best that I can, and I don't feel like I'm given an opportunity to be the very best that I can, to bring that every single day. And, and that's really all I want to do is bring that every single day. I don't want to be held back anymore. I feel like in high school, I was taken out at the fourth quarter. You know, I'm taking out the game. College, I wasn't in a system where you could really thrive and do all these things. And since I've been here, yeah, I've put up numbers and records have been broken and all those good things, which not to say mean nothing to me, but I know that they could have been double or, or triple, whatever they are now. That's the, that's the part that bothers me. I want to win. I want to be great at what I do. I feel like I could score a touchdown in the first half, touchdown in the second half. Honestly, I feel like I could score every quarter if, quarter, yeah. if, I, if I'm given a chance, but it's not the case. So I said, oh, my God, I need to get two touchdowns a game. 100 yards is a minimum. Like I, My goals are set very, very high. And if I don't get to help uh, attribute to a team's win or do anything like that, I'm not going to be okay with it, money or no money. Like, I'm just not going to be okay with that. So let's get to it then. Let's get to it then. What is holding you back? <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. Like I said, I just haven't been in the situation. I haven't been in the place where I feel like I can really go out and do everything that I'm capable of doing. It, I don't get 20 targets like some other receivers. So is it the offense? Is it the scheme? When you're talking about you're uh, not put in a Everything situation? at the moment. It's just everything. It's just everything. And, and not to say that it's not going to work, but at the moment, uh, I feel like I work entirely way too hard. To, Like I say this all the time, we, we work five days a week, six days a week. You get up, let's say you get up seven. Some people is earlier, seven to five is when you get home. What, that's 10 hours. You're supposed to sleep eight, that never happens. So oh, that's okay. 18 that's... hours out of 24. So I have six hours of free time. A lot of them six hours, I got to do some rehab, some, some work, something to keep my body right. So take away. On your dime. On my own, right. So take away three more hours. Now it's like you have one to two hours of free time. like, And, and it's like you sacrificing everything. You're sacrificing going out, seeing people, having fun, living your life to for the betterment of the team, to to put your best foot forward. And you don't even get the chance. Expect it back. You you expect you expect to be able to go out there and do my very best every single Sunday. It's only sixty minutes. Okay, here's another direct question. What amount of accountability do you think Eli Manning is taking for where the offense is right now? We try and keep it as a team, but um, this is it's a team sport, but it's it's individualized at the moment. It's quarterback, receiver, running back, O line. Like each O lineman has to block. Everybody has to do their job. Um, and and there usually was that part of me that I would you know be like, man, I feel like I could do this and that. And and right now the position I feel like I'm in is that I can't even say that I could. I, I feel like I could do this. I feel like I could do that because I'm not really given a chance to do all that. You know, I want that pressure. Like I said before the offseason, I said, what well, future say? He said, we want all the smoke. I want it all. I want, if, if we lose and it's because of me, I want to be able to take, take that. It, yeah. I don't want to have to take it and it not be me. Like, I want to be able to put, put it on my shoulders. Oh, I know you do. I'm ready to carry it. I know you that's, do. that's it. If I don't get the opportunity to do that and I have to take the blame for it, it's going to be a problem. Simple as throw the ball to him, man. That's just, it's easy. What'd you say? It's easy. Just throw the ball to him, man. Mm -hmm. that is, what do you think is the issue? Just he needs to get the ball more? They got, to me, uh, that's first off. He got, I mean, come on. He's Odell. He needs the ball more. Just, I don't know what else would what we'll be. If I was, when I say we, meaning if I was with the Giants, what else would we be doing? What else? I mean, what? Mm -hmm. Saquon is awesome. Mm -hmm. Let him do what he do. We got to get this man the ball. We got to our scheme, our scam, whatever. We got to. It need to be with this man involved, and not only involved, but the scheme need to be about this man. Mm -hmm. The O-line got to protect for Eli, because I don't think Eli done that all. I think Eli still get the ball where it's supposed to go to. Mm -hmm. Interesting. You know I mean, he ain't about to be scrambling and doing all this, you know, all this other <laughs> stuff. He ain't going to take off running. Yeah, he might get the Patrick Moore and all that stuff, but he can get the ball where it goes. Yeah. I still think he got some fight in him. So do you think it was the right decision to draft Saquon Barkley as opposed to drafting one of these young uh, quarterbacks QBs. in the 2018 draft class? Um, I think you make the I make I think you make the choice for the time and not the times. 
I'm one of those guys, I mean, you know, they got some people that believe in the process and all that type of stuff. I'm one of them people that make it, man, make it, let's move, let's do what we got to do now. And I think uh, if that's what they felt that they needed that running, I think, well, okay, I, I don't disagree with your feel, but now execute it. I think I thought you did it because we need a run game to complement what we got on that wild, you know what I mean? But now you're not used, you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing to me. Mm -hmm. You're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. But also, they got to protect Eli, man. He needs some time back there. So you heard what he had to say. So I'll ask you one last direct question on that topic. Do you have an issue at quarterback then? Uh, I don't know. Like I said, I feel like he he's not going to get out the pocket. He's not. We, no. we know Eli's not running. Mm -mm. Uh, but is it a matter of time issue? Can, can he still throw it? Yeah, I don't think we've been running too much stuff that allows us to to even, like even see a test to say anything about right. it, yeah. And it's been, you know, cool catching the shallow and trying to take it to the house, but I'm, you know, I want to I wanna go over the top of somebody. I want to, I feel like in the past five years, they found a way to, to run a cover two, keep everything in front, and that's how they play me. And there's no, there's no way to, how do we beat this? You know, I feel like I'm being out schemed and then I also don't have a chance to like, do something, or I got to take a slant and go 60. And not to say it's not fun, but it's like I want, you know, I want some easy touchdowns too. I watch everybody across the league, uh, all, all the top receivers get the ball the way that they, you know, should. And if they don't, they say something about it. And speaking of watching people all across the league, we know we just saw that Thursday night game between the Rams and the Vikings. You see Sean McVay molding Jared Goff, genius play calling, 400 plus passing yard game, or what have you. They so. man playing Madden on the sidelines. You say they playing Madden yeah. on the sidelines, right? Yeah. And I think that has a lot to do with the, the energy, though. Like I say, mm -hmm. it's about a culture. It's about it's, it's about not to be like everybody need to buy in, but you need to, like, it's it's time to go. Like, why are, it's quiet in the locker room. Like, we need to have some energy, and I feel like I really try and bring that. And and it's like, you could get the team going, you get the team going. I try to, and I don't. So am I putting forth bad? Am I putting forth energy that is it worth exhausting yourself for something that's not receiving it back? Like I don't know. That's that's the internal questions that go on in my head. Mm. But make some moves, James. I gotta get it right. <laughs> we gonna get it right as long as I'm here. Like I just I I don't see myself losing, and I hate losing. I I don't want to be the one at the end of the career who oh you had a great career and all this no no rings no no none of that. Like that's not my. That's not why I came here to play. It's not my MO. But how does that make you feel when you see all that offense going and it's just clicking, clicking, and y'all, you know, just struggling to get 30 points? Like, how was that making you feel in the moment? <laughs> Heated, you know, because I know what I'm capable of. I, I know what I feel like I can bring to the table each and every day, and that's all I want to do. That's literally all I want to do. I, I've given up, personally sacrificed a lot of things recently, just giving it up just because this is all I want to do. You know, I know you've been working so much on your personal evolution, okay, and your evolvement, but recently, this past game on the sidelines, it started to seep out just a little bit. He's still, I mean, what he's still in there. Yeah, he? Yeah, he. What is he? You know, Bruce Banner got the Hulk inside of him. Like, I got a little somebody who was in there. What's his name? I don't know it. <laughs> I don't know it. <laughs> so what was going on it in, just, in that moment? That's just, it's the only way I can get myself fired up. If I sit there and try and pretend like I don't care about the situ situation, I'm going I'm to emotionally remove myself from something. Mm -hmm. And once I'm emotionally removed from something, I no longer have any kind of attachment to it. You know, once emotionally, if it's gone, like, it's over with. So emotionally, he's still down in there, and he's seething. He, he's, he's, he was inside boiling like he just wanted to be let out. I don't get a chance to let him out, I gotta watch it, you know, I got camera. I remember I'm, I'm literally in the game, and Buddy's standing on the side just like this, like just down the bench, <laughs> just leaning Wait, this way. Wait, what's this, where's the cameraman? Camera, yeah. That's the cameraman, <laughs> he was there for like at least 10 minutes, like right. just filming me, and I'm just like, you know. Like, right. You good, bro, you good, yeah, right. You didn't do the Earl Thomas, though. No, no, I didn't do that, and I feel for him, you yeah. know. Yeah, 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 him, yeah you see, exactly what it's we were talking about. Right, and that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother situation. So, wrapping up, go ahead, what were you about to say? Before you, when you wrap up, I have a question to ask yeah, you. Yeah, please too. go, take over. Oh, cool? Yeah, go ahead. I just want to know, first, we ain't had to do it on camera. I want you to ask <laughs> Eli, is this true? So I have a, I have a, like, an uncle, and when he was locked up, 
when it's time got shot, you know how when they time get shot, they let those 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 inmates, they let them uh, clean up the city. Mm -hmm. He was one of those. He would always clean up by whatever school that was they went to. Um, and it would be at 3, 4 in the morning because they were, obviously they couldn't clean up while the children was in school, the inmates. He said there was never a morning that he was there and Archie Cooper, um, Peyton was out there. He said Eli, was, he said, I don't know if it was Eli, but there was always a baby there too. Mm -hmm. So I was like, well, obviously if it was a baby, it had to be Eli. I just wanted to know if any of that was true. I said, Eli, if that's true. Bro. Okay. <laughs> Put that in your back pocket. Make sure you take care of that when you go to the locker room. Okay, so we want to spin it back because, you know, we do have a big album of yours, and I want to get back to this. And, and the track can't be broken. Sometimes feel like my head is screwed, twisted like tornadoes too. Did I do good with that one? That's better? Okay, now you can sign me and everything. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to know, speaking of that, when you say sometimes feel like my head is screwed, twisted like tornadoes too, mm -hmm. how do you personally deal with the weight of expectation, especially with this album coming out? Embrace it. Enjoy it. Embrace it. That's the only way you're supposed to deal with it. You, everybody always says, you get butterflies, are you nervous, do you care with it? No, you embrace it. Uh, I can't wait for you to hear it. I can't wait to give it to you. Therefore, that, that follows you even in the booth. That follows you when it's just you and that microphone and not a crowd in front of you. Embrace it. I can't wait till you hear what I'm doing. And so when I am in front of you, hopefully I remember it right and you'll hear it perfectly. Yeah. So, and are you embracing yeah, where you bag. are now? Or, hold on, or I want to know, are you, think about this, I want you to be honest. Are you truly happy in New York? It's <laughs> a tough question. Um, obviously, you know I love I love seeing the sunshine all the time. I love I love LA. <laughs> you know I love being in LA. I just like that atmosphere. But um, boy, you know it's too cold out here. <laughs> you too cold out here. <laughs> you know we're not a fan of the cold. You're not a fan of the cold. No, I'm not. So what that what does that mean? This is where I'm at. This is where I'll be at in my life for the next five years, unless God has some other plans Teach for me. Some hospitality, that's all. That's just something. Southern Give hospitality. Something. I, remember yeah, I called somebody I mean. ma'am up here when I first got up here, and it didn't go well with them. See, that's, that's it. oh, man. <laughs> what we do. You just not only that, over here relating. a whole bunch yeah. of other stuff. Bro. But anyway, yeah, I love New York. You love New York? Yeah, well, I love New York. You want to say that with more conviction? <laughs> you know I hear everything at your toe. <laughs> no, going over with uh, talking about expectations and, yeah. and embracing that stuff though. Like I remember before games, I used to get that butterf I used to get butterflies or like good butterflies. Like I was mm -hmm. anxious, and now when I step on the field, like it's something completely different. Mm -hmm. It's not butterflies. Like it's like I want to be here. Like I'm. I've been waiting. I've been waiting to get here this whole time. I feel like a cage animal who gets this. This is my 60 minutes of play time. And you know, I can play with other people. We can play nice or we don't have to play nice. But like I get to play and mm -hmm. I get to do all this. This is my this is my time to be out the cage. You know, if somebody's messing with me during my time to be out the cage, like mm -hmm. it's gonna be a problem. I love it. You know, so it's a different feeling that I have now going onto the field. It's not like butterflies. It's like, yeah, like I'm ready. Are you ready? Last question for you and I got one for you. So you and I were recently having a conversation and you said that you, and you have opportunity to explain this, that you don't want to kind of end up like a Charles Barkley or Carmelo Anthony in terms of- Not oh, getting rings. Right. Not being not great. Right. And, right, and I want you to explain that in terms of what it is that you ultimately are trying to achieve. Um, it kind of just, you know, it's like LeBron, like, I just want to win. Mm -hmm. I don't care w what you have to do. Um, I want to win. I want to be somewhere where we are going to win or be in a position to win. Um, and that's really what it boils down to. It's just I, I just want, all I want to do is win. So Carmelo Anthony, Charles Barkley, both of these players are, to me, legendary players. Carmelo's amazing. Charles is amazing. These are amazing players. Did they ever get championships? No. I'm sure that has to, you know, bother to some extent. Like, I never got to win a championship. I remember fourth grade, um, Stuart Hall, we was playing basketball, championship game. They hit a buzzer beater. It was like 1.7 seconds left. And my team's like, 
Man, they pass the ball to me. I throw it up three quarters. I make it. It was two refs. I already thought the game was over. I made it. Basket no good, you know. I remember crying that night. Like, you, you stole something from me. Like, that, I, I just made this shot. Like, we won the game. You stole this from me. Mm-hmm. Championship, flag football, you know, lost in the championship. I still, five touchdowns, like, we lost. Um, national championship, my, my freshman year in college. We should have never played Alabama again. Somehow you had to play them again. I don't know what went on in the locker room, and that's probably a story for another day. Something was going on, but uh, we didn't cross the 50. We got we got bluesed, like we 21 nothing, um, losing the championship at home in the dome. Never had got the state championship, which would have been in the dome. It's my first opportunity to play in the dome, losing. So, what it really boils down to is I just want to be somewhere where I can win. I just want to be a champion. That's it. And with your release of the Carter Five on Friday. Um, whether it was the day before it came out or where you are right now, what do you want that album to do in terms of your reassertion, the underlining of your place in the hierarchy of hip hop and rap? Uh, I, I have no, I have no expectations. I have no wants for what it wanted to do for me, uh, my career, nothing. I just, only thing I ever want is for the people to like it. That's all I ever want. It's for my fans to like it. That's all I ever want. Mm-hmm. For them to be satisfied and say whatever they was waiting on, it was it was good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's it. When, you, when y'all on the road, and it's a road game, and there's so many people just against, mm-hmm. so first, it's one thing to be on the team they're against, but then when they think about the team, all they're gonna think about is you. And when you out there, how do I feel? He said 80 something thousand, you know 80,000, they all, we don't want Zoom. you to catch the ball. Zoomed in, um, you can feel the energy. Um, and I remember maybe last year, years before, like I could really feel that mm-hmm. energy. And like I told you, I'm in a different place, but I remember going down to Philly and this little kid in the stands, like I laughed at it, but he, it was like a little, little kid, like. All right, like, I can tell you, I know how Cussing me out and stuff like that, like it's just different when um you have so many people rooting for you to fail. And the things that they would say to you while they're drinking a beer in the stands mm-hmm. that they would never say yeah. to your face if they met you, probably yeah. want a picture or exactly. something like that. Yeah. But <laughs> just, uh-huh. right. I love, yeah. this is the best jacket I've ever <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That type of, yeah. Exactly yeah. what it yeah. is. So it's crazy to feel that energy when you could feel, you know, so much hate yeah. that that's just on you like that. Reason why that was my question because I've been in front of crowds my whole life and happy to say never have, hopefully never have to, been in an in environment where the crowd is against you. you. Right, right, yeah, right. So I always wanted to know, like, man, what does that feel like? <laughs> you, run, you run out there, how y'all doing, Mic check? Ah, <sighs> but. Yeah, I can't, yeah, I wouldn't. You couldn't deal. Yeah. yeah. What about you? Oh. I guess in the same sense, how does it feel? You know, when you you fill an arena up with 80,000 people and they come in there to see, to see you. Yeah. They're not coming there to see the team, they're coming there to see you as a person. And it's, and it's based off of what you've done, what you've worked your whole life to do, what you dedicated your time and everything to do. I go to the same moment every time. The moment is me with my socks on and the mirror. Mm-hmm. You know, with my socks on and the mirror, probably about 10 years old rapping something that's probably wasn't my song, but I got the beat on, I just knew it by heart. Probably was Bone Thugs, it could have been anything. Just, that's the moment I go to. So all I seen in the mirror was me, yeah. you know what I mean? But the crowd is who what I pictured the mirror was. So I go to that moment and once I step on stage, I got those two things. Okay, here's the crowd, but I got them socks. Is it just the socks? That, anything else? You need to stop. I just know how to clarify. I'm sorry. It's just, I just heard the sock. Okay, well. One final thing you want to say to him? All right. Love. Get one for me, too. <laughs> I appreciate you all. I appreciate it. Thank Thanks you for, for sitting down.